Do, 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 do. There we are. Uh, can we see comments? How come they're not working? Good morning. Good morning, Kathy. Hi, Angela. It's being a little bit slow today. Hi, Terry. Thank you, everyone, for bearing with me today. Today, for those of you who don't know, it's Ash Wednesday, so if you see people walking around with dirt on their forehead, that is why. Let me see if I can find this one other thing. And we also had, of course, another wonderful morning here in the house where everything was going awry. If anyone has a uh, <laughs> a toddler or ever has had a toddler, you know how that is. <laughs> Good morning, Terry, Adrian, Judy, Diana. Thank you all for joining. Hi, Denise. It's gonna be 85 in Arizona. Wow, you're you're very, very lucky. It's it feels like 13 here in Maryland. Good morning, Yvonne. Yvonne, I think you've popped on before, and I told you um you remind me of my aunt. That was her name. Yelka Yvonne. Yvonne Yelka. But we called her Tinky, Aunt Tinky. So thank you. It was nice to think of her today. Hi, Angela. Good morning, Erin and Wanda. It doesn't stop at a toddler age. I know, Donna, you keep warning me that, but <laughs> I'm not saying that I don't believe you, but oh my gosh, he's just all of a sudden, he has taken off to a whole new level. All right, so just a couple of things today. This pop on by bundle, that's not it, that's the tree house. This pop on by bundle is actually in the um, annual catalog and let's see if I can find where it is in the piece pop 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 there we go 41 so currently you can get it if you buy them together as a bundle you can get a 10% discount you can see there's lots of great cards here there's also many great cards you can make just if you're going to use the stamp this card up here is gorgeous I'm going to recreate that one you can also just use the fence so the fence you build your own fence you can make it as big as you wanted you could decorate it you could do the tree branches which are super fun you can make a pop-up house and this is kind of what I was telling you you can make it so it's actually different colors so what you could do is kind of trim it down so what if we do something um, similar to that I'm not sure if we're going to get three different colors but we can do something like that so I'll show you guys how to make it we'll actually we'll do it on thick whisper white and the other thing, I had an idea, and the Rainbow Stamper and I were talking about this last week when I dropped him off at school, and then I completely forgot about it, but I have an idea, and I'm going to have to work on it because it's going to take me a few minutes, but I think it will be super cute. I don't really want to share too much of it, but I was kind of thinking of if you have this and like what you could put on the front of the card, you could put um, Welcome Home, because right here, as you can see, it only shows you the inside. It doesn't show you really what it looks like closed. So you could stamp something on the front, but again, the main attraction really is the fact that the card pops up. So probably people aren't really going to care what's on the front once they open it and see it. But you could even put something like this on the front. Like, you know, if you really had a, a card that you wanted to make for someone special, you could stamp the house and put it on the front. You could stamp the picket fence and put that on the closed side of the card. Then when it opens, the house would be there. So lots of cute ideas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the pop-up part of the card today. So it isn't going to be extremely detailed in the actual finishing of the card, but I will do a couple different versions of this and share them with you. Um... Oh my gosh, another two to four inches of snow tomorrow. And look, you're so happy. We are so over the snow. I'm ready for spring already. That's You're happy it's one above zero. That's too funny. I understand just how you feel. It's like you kind of love the winter, and then when you get the taste of spring, you're like, all right, I'm done. I don't know if anybody else feels that way, but that's, that's how I feel. So anyway, what we'll do is we're going to do the pop-up. We'll do it on Thick Whisper White for the background portion. So I'm going to just give you a couple uh, tips and tricks that I've learned as we've gone along. And then what we'll do is I'm going to cut out another house and we can kind of overlay it. And we can do we can do two pieces. It's no big deal. We'll do it as two. So what we're going to do to start is I'm going to get out that looks like gray. And I'm betting this is pool party. But I'm going to go with Coastal Cabana because we all know how much I love Coastal Cabana. So let me get out 
some Coastal Cabana. Now, when you do the additional cutting pieces of this, as you can see, I must have had a card done on this. I have all these bases made up. You don't really need a full sheet because you're only really cutting out the, um, the house portion. So technically, you could really just get away with making sure that it's tall enough to fit the gables here. And then you could do a gray piece, like a scrap piece for the roof portion. So we can do that. I mean, that's completely doable. So what we'll do is we'll kind of get a piece of Coastal Cabana out to start with. I'll get a piece of, I believe it looks like it's basic gray because it is pretty dark. And where's my basic gray? And then I'll get a piece of thick whisper white to actually do the base on. So let's see, does that look wide enough? No, that's not quite wide enough. Here's a good scrappy piece since we're only really cutting out the roof portion. So we'll just use that. Actually, I'm gonna use this one since it's already kind of cut up. These colors look really pretty together, by the way. And then, and you could also do a black roof if you wanted one. So, looking for, sorry, I was trying to grab my thick whisper white. So you do have to kind of pre-score this a little bit to get the fold to come out really nicely. So I'm gonna show you what to do for that. So. I'm going to go ahead and just trim a piece. The one thing you need to remember when you do this, I don't know why I forgot to put that one away, is you have to do this in a crosswise card. So you can't do this on a thin hot dog. It has to be a wide card because of the size of these little roof pieces that are going to pop out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do two things. First off, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm just kind of keeping this out for myself so I can take a peek at it. I'm going to go ahead and stamp a few of these little flowers because I'm going to color these with the um, stamp and blends. That way they'll have time to dry before I stamp them. So I'm going to grab some memento and I'm going to stamp these. Just let them dry a little bit. And you probably could put three, but I'm, I'm going to stamp three. We may only end up using two. Oh, that one was a little gooey, but I just re-inked this recently. The other thing that's in there that you can cut out if you like are curtains. So you could stamp curtains and then cut them out and lay them behind. You also have a little um, wreath for the door. So I'm going to just do the, the flower boxes for now. So I'm going to set these on the side to dry. And again, you can just use the house if you wanted to. You could color the house in with the blends. The blends are really, really, really great for that. And speaking of, I just want to show you guys this. So if you order from me, and I didn't share these yet, but I figured I would share them on here. I always send out thank you cards, even, you know, just like thank you for, even if it's a, you know, it's a small order, that's fine. I still send out something. But I stamp these with using the Stamparatus. I do this on a heavier weight. I don't even know what card stock this is from. It's kind of like a junk card stock. But I colored these in with the blends, which you can see from the inside. But aren't they neat looking? So these are two extra ones and I just colored them in with the blends I did like variations with the skirts a couple of these have people's addresses on them so I don't want to share them with you because I've already written them but look how cool they look I mean these balloons this is a um exclusive host stamp set and of course I just put it down far away and I don't know where I put it oh here it is it's called hand delivered isn't it cute though? But you could put the books, like if you have teachers you want to give something to, you do this for like wedding invitations. And then you, the thank you did fit in the balloons, but you could put stuff on the sign as well. So I thought this was really cute. You can also add some decor to her skirt if you didn't want it to be plain. So this is really, really fun to use. And then the cool part is since it's photopolymer, it's really simple to line it up. That way you can get the, either the, uh, the shirt on top, right on top, or you can get the sign or anything else. So Super cute. I've also seen a couple people have done this and they popped out the balloons. So they were like dimensional, which is really neat. So cool idea. If you haven't seen that in the back of the catalog, that's another neat idea. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just cut a piece of this coastal cabana. And normally we do like four and a quarter. So I'm just going to trim this to like a quarter sheet. That way I could use the other. I'm actually going to trim it to five because I don't think the house is quite. Yeah, that'll work. I'm going to trim this to five. So we'll run that through. And then we're going to, I'm going to trim this down just a little bit so we can do the roof. So same thing again. I'm just going to cut this down to five inches. It doesn't really need to be quite this wide. 
but I'd rather err on the, the, the portion of making sure that I have enough so I can always use the bottom for something different. So I have those two pieces. And then in order to make the actual fold of the card, we're going to do a little bit of pre-scoring for this. So once again, you do need to have a wide card base because it has to fit on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half at five and a half. Again, this is thick whisper white, so it definitely is much sturdier. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of scoring, just a really, really little bit. So I'm going to put this to four and a quarter. And what I'm doing is I'm just scoring in maybe about not even, it doesn't even really need to be a half inch on each side is what I'm pretty sure I found worked pretty well. So if you can see right there, there's a little score line in here. You don't want to score it all the way across because then it's going to put a dent in your house and it doesn't fold correctly. So just kind of keep that in mind. And the, the thing is, when you have these little lines here, these little clear cutouts, you're actually lining that up with the score line. So it really doesn't need to be this big. You could probably make it a quarter inch if you wanted to. All right, so what I'm going to do First, let me grab the big shot and I have been using my magnetic platform because I finally watched this video and I wish I would have found this a long long time ago about how to keep a top plate flat so I don't remember um, the girl's name that I watched this on but what she basically said is if you use the same plate for the bottom and then you can keep a clean plate for the top so you can see it doesn't really have very many much etching in it and it is really flat what you have to do is when your plate for the bottom, if it has a bow in it, so basically if you can like push it to bend, you want to keep it down. So if we were to, to keep using this and then eventually it starts popping out the other direction, then we would just flip it over. So as long as it has a bend in it, going to put that so you can push the bend down. And this is really helpful with um, saving paper, number one, if you're trying to save paper with using many pieces of cardstock. So what I'm going to do, let me move this over. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to kind of eyeball where I want it. So if I want the roof, I'm just going to make sure it goes down just a little past the roof. Like that. I'm going to put this down just like so. Again, when you have your magnetic platform, it does stick. And one thing you kind of want to be mindful of, if you have straight lines, you don't really want it to go straight into the roller. So this is kind of slightly skewed, which is good enough. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to put my top plate on and I'm going to crank it through. And I have been doing it twice. You may or may not need to do it twice, but I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to do this one once and we'll see if it pops out simply or not. And that way we'll know. So cold Virginia. Oh goodness, Linda. I feel your pain there. All right. So the only thing is it does give you a nicer crease. So when we do our actual card, I'm going to um, run it through twice. It does give you a nicer crease if you run it through twice, but we don't really need this piece anyway because we're just using, let's see if I can pop that without it ripping. We're just using the roof. So really we're just using this piece here. So we're going to trim the rest of this out. So that's going to be no problem. But you see, it does give you really nice bends. Okay, so this is going to be our roof part. And we're going to put it through once more. So we can have the front of the house be Coastal Cabana. So same thing again. Really, this one is definitely bigger than it needs to be. What I'm aiming for is just making sure that I get both points on there. And another thing you can do too, if you're worried about whether or not it's cut enough, is you can actually run your die through so it's facing up. That way you make sure that you have everything cut that you want. So that's another good way to do it. So I'm going to do that this way. And I'm going to just put this on top. Yep, look at that. That's okay. It's still, I can't see the points. That's really what I'm concerned with. It's just static electricity. <laughs> everything is sticking to everything. So when you do it that way, and I'm going to just run it, put it, put it back under here so you can actually see what I mean. Because the static is wanting to pick this up. You can see if it's cut. So if there's something where you're like, I'm not sure if that's cut enough, the good thing about this is you can see where it's cut so you could always add it again. But I think we should be fine because we're gonna just be trimming this part off. So, you know what? I'm gonna do it once more just to be sure because I'd hate to do it and then it ends up being goofy. Now, one thing you have to know though, if you do it upside down is that you are gonna put a mark in the top. Okay, so just keep that in mind. 
So in that case, you would want to put your nice, your nice clean plate on the bottom. All right, so now it's definitely out because you can see there's pieces that are sticking to everything here. So now at this point, if this were to be your um, your bottom piece, you would want to flip it the other way so the, the bowing goes down. I hope that makes sense. It does, yes, Luli, it does cut the top plate if you do it that way. So you would want to use your cut up plate on the top if that's the case, okay? So you're definitely right on that. All right, so now... The other thing you could do too, if you were trying to eliminate that, is you could use a piece of like uh, painter's tape or post-it note or something to hold it in place. So now what we're gonna do is our last one, and we'll do all the trimming up on this in a minute. And we're gonna put our piece down. So this is gonna be our base, our card base. So you wanna make sure that this is lined up where you want it. You want it to be, I'm trying to make sure that's in there. You want it to be even for the most part, so it's centered visually for you. Make sure that's on the line. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down. And then if you are concerned with it at all slipping, and this uh, tape is pretty pretty well used, so I'm just gonna grab a piece of post-it tape. I'm just gonna set this here just to kind of hold it in place. I'm trying to make sure, I'm gonna lift this up for a second <laughs> because when I laid it down, I can't tell if it's centered or not. That looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down. And again, since I have this taped and I can feel the magnet pulling it, I'm just tilting it just a little bit so it doesn't go through straight, if that makes sense. But also at the same time, I'm gonna do it so I don't crinkle up my card stock. So it's really just a slight angle. So same thing again, I wanna put my top plate on. Okay. Your top plate is the one that always bows. You know what, Char? You might need to, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you this. If you're doing this with a set of plates that are already bowed, it doesn't really matter. So plates really are not, you can hear the static on that. They're not really that expensive. So what I did was I just got a brand new set and started over again. That way I didn't have to worry about whether or not things did or didn't line up. Let me move this tape off. So once they're really bowed, there's not really much you can do. I actually threw a bunch of them away the other day because they were so, I mean, there was like no redeeming these things. They were almost, I don't want to say they were in the shape of a C, but they were getting pretty close. <laughs> okay, so here's my base. All right, so let me move this out of the way. All right, so there's my base. I think I got a little bit of, uh, let's see if I can get this off a little bit of, sticky on there from that tape. Okay. So now if you're going to add anything to your card, like for example, if you're going to add the stepping stones, now would be the time you want to do it. Okay. You also can add your layers to it. That way it can glue down flat. So we're going to do that while we're at it. You know, I did mine too for a while that way, Cindy, with rotating them, but I still found that no matter what, I was having a lot of trouble with getting them um, to be more so to, to use a piece that was nice when I was cutting white. That's the thing that I found was the, the major problem. So this doesn't even really need scissors. It just barely breaks away. And I'm going to cut this off because we're going to just put the roof on. Do the same thing here. I'm just going to cut straight across, cut all these little tabs off. If you bend them enough, you can probably just very gently pry them off as well. And if it bothers you that there's these little tabs, you can go ahead and trim, but it's not that big of a deal. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay this on top eventually. So this is going to go over. You could have your uh, chimney be white if you wanted to, so you could trim this straight off. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make our chimney white. So I'm just going to trim this off. And I'm just going to take these little nips off. So that'll be our roof. The chimney will be white. You could color the chimney if you wanted to. I'm going to pop the rest of these windows out. And then you are going to need a base to lay this on. That is the one thing I did not say. So if you want it to just be like this on the card with, so you kind of pinch these in and roll the rest of these forward. This could be your base, but you can also go a step farther and you could lay it just bending this in and bending this up. 
So it's pretty simple. This one is way easier oops, than a roller coaster. Way, way easier. So you could lay this so it's going to be on another piece of cardstock, which I am ultimately going to do. So I'll show you how to do that. So you're just kind of following the bends. There you go. And that just sits up. So easy. Roller coaster, not this easy. So I don't want to deceive you. This one is way easier to use. And I think it's because it doesn't have the track parts in it like the roller coaster does. So just keep that in mind. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to use this piece here. And we're going to lay it on top of our uh, house to give it that color. So I'm going to go ahead and just snip a few of these out. I'm not using this whole roof piece, so I'm just going to cut this. But the cool thing is, since we've done this, you could save the rest of these pieces for something else if you wanted to. So you could save like the, uh, the roof and you could use the Coastal Cabana roof for something different. So if you have more than one project to do or more than one card you're going to make a, more than one person you're going to make a house card for. Okay. This one definitely is way, way, way simpler than that roller coaster. And I really, I think the saddest part for that is I really, really love that roller coaster because it was so cute. Just basically I'm just folding this enough that it's going to pull those little perforations off without cutting. And then if you need to, you can always go back and do like a little clean up trim there. I really, really wanted to love that roller coaster. And we may end up cutting these guys off here. Yeah, I'm going to cut these guys off. So I'm going to just trim this right here. Um, other thing you could do if you wanted to is you could put some Sizzix adhesive sheet on the back of this, but I'm going to just end up adhering it with the fine tip glue pen just because it's smaller. But, so I have my roof piece and I have my house piece. But what I want to do before I finish doing that is I want to trim this up just a little bit because I am going to lay it on something. So I'm going to take about probably between the ends, which you could do this ahead of time if you wanted to as well. So this is going to me measure five and a half. So I'm going to take off a quarter inch from each side on the wide side. So this will end up taking it down to five. And that should be fine. Which coincidentally is also going to cut off a little bit more of our scoring line, which doesn't affect it whatsoever. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to take a quarter inch, which I typically measure when I'm doing the quarters. I do it to the side. So you have a half inch is the bigger mark, three quarters and one. So I'm just taking a quarter inch off the top and the bottom. And this really... We'll just make sure that when it lays on your card, it has a little bit of a border. So you don't have to do this. You can skip this because this is Thick Whisper White. So it should stand perfectly fine on its own. All right, let me move this over. And then I think what I'm going to do for the background of this is I'm going to stamp this. I mean, I'm going to lay this onto, um, I think I'm going to do Pool Party because that's still pretty pretty light of color. You could do pool party or you could do um, soft sea foam would be pretty as well. But I'm going to just do it. Nope, that's mint. That's not what I wanted. I'm going to do it on pool party. So I have a piece here that's already we'll just lay. All we have to do is score that and we can lay that right on top of there. So let's see. I'm just going to give this a, a score at four and a quarter. Okay, so what it'll do is it'll lay and it'll just have a, a nice border to it once we put it together. Okay, so that'll be that. And let's see. You could, we could still go ahead. So I'm just popping these through. Once you get this assembled, it doesn't require all this continuously refolding, but I'm kind of still trying to keep it a little flat so I can adhere the stuff to it. Okay, so... You could add the little trees if you wanted to in the background, like the branches. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these little stones so it's like a path kind of leading up the steps. And I'm going to do this in a pretty light color. So I'm going to go with gray granite. So 
So all I'm doing is I have this kind of set up so I can see where I want it. But once I start with the first pass, I'll lay it down. So it's going to go here. And then you can kind of turn this if you want so it matches a little bit better. Like it's a path taking them to the sidewalk or the driveway or whatever. And we'll just go a little bit more. I'm going to turn that a little. There you go. So those can, that could be your path. Again, if you wanted to add the trees in the background, we could do that. I'm going to add it in just for the heck of it because I haven't done one before. So we'll add, and I'm going to just do very limited because I don't want it to be too... I don't want it to overlap onto the house is really what I don't want. So I'm going to do one on each side. And I'm going to do those in Memento again. That way I can color them in with the blends. I'm going to try to be super careful when I do this. I'll try to also keep my head out of the picture if I can help it. There's one, and I'm going to do this one on the other side, see if I can do this without botching it up. Just going to slip this over. This is a really cool house, too, because I'm sure now, you know, is the time of year when people buy new houses. So if you know anyone that's going to be moving, this will be a fun card because you could completely decorate it, you know, for their colors of their house, even if you knew what they were doing. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces and I'm going to just adhere them on. I want to make sure that I have nothing connected. So make sure I might have to snip this just a teeny, teeny. Uh, see if I can get that in there. Just a little bit. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have my, where did I put it? Oh, you know why? Because we're using it. Sorry, we have stamp class on Friday, and I forgot we needed to use this for something, so I already put it in there. So I'm going to just put some of this fine tip glue onto the back, not really being like too precise, because it's going to go over the whole thing. You probably could also use snail if you wanted to for this, because it's pretty large. But I do find that when you do this, you definitely have to make sure you get to the edges, because if not... I'm going to leave that sit there for a minute. If not, it will come up. So what I've done with this in the past, when I did one the other week, is I kind of line this up where I wanted it. And we probably certainly could trim off this little extra bit down here so it just goes to the roof line. But since I already glued it, I'm going to skip that. And then what I'm going to do is I pressed it, but I also want to make sure that it's not impeding any of my opening part. So I pressed it there, and then if you have either like a block just to hold it for a minute, just to kind of give it something to press a little pressure, so you could do that. And again, you could totally skip this. You don't have to do these extra layers. You could just pick a card, color, and do something very simple. So it doesn't have to be this complicated. All right, and then I'm going to glue down the house part. And we'll just do that. I'm going to do it straight. Now you can also, if you wanted to, you could take off the door. So we could take, I'm going to go ahead and take off the inside door. That way, or you could do a white door if you wanted to. That might be neat. Having a, let's do that. We'll have the white door peek through. We'll see what that looks like. Hopefully, hopefully it looks good. So I'm just bending this forward and backward so I can break it off without ripping. So this part, you do have to be just a little careful. And I, was, I will say, I don't know if this bundle will or won't carry over. That was the other thing I kind of wanted to mention. So that looks kind of neat because you have the nice white door against it. So I don't know if this bundle will or won't carry over. I was pretty surprised when the roller coaster carried over because I don't think that was really a great seller because it was not super easy to use. And I will agree, I did many different things to try to get it to work well. 
Again, I'm just making sure I get glue all the way to the tips of this so nothing comes apart once it gets opened. So I was pretty shocked when the roller coaster carried over it. What I think they were probably hoping is, since they added this in it, maybe people would try it. Which, after I made this card, the house card, the first one. So I'm just kind of laying this right over top. And I'm going to open it to make sure that it is lined up correctly. Because I don't want it to be where it won't fold. So that looks pretty good. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put my blocks and just kind of put a little pressure here to make sure it sticks together. So I was surprised anyway. Go back to the same thing about the roller coaster. And I thought, okay, let me try it again once I made the house, but it's still hard. <laughs> so I think the roller coaster is just, I don't know. It's just not easy to get the bends to work. It's a great idea in theory, but it just doesn't turn out so well. My gosh, you got eight inches of snow in six hours. My goodness, Vicki, that's insane. Don't worry, you're not that late. I started late today because I was... I was at church. They, I felt they had the kids in, in uh, school today for church, which they usually do once a week anyway. But man, I kind of felt for the teachers today because they had ashes, first of all, and they had communion. So they were really in a, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot for uh, pre-kindergarten to be able to sit through. So what I did was I just kind of made sure that my bends were still good. So if you can see from this, everything's lining up well. Um, my door does open, not that it needs to, but the door does open. And then all we're going to do now is we're going to fold this. Let me fold this and I'm going to just adhere this down. Okay. So there is what that's going to look like. Have this part's going to lay right on there. Before I do that, I'm going to just add a little bit to my trees because I don't want to have to do that once I'm done. So I'm going to go with... Granny apple green because we're going to pretend like it's spring. So I'm going to start with my light and then I will add a little bit of dark if I need to. So I just have my granny apple green. And since these are pretty small, that's why I'm kind of just doing all the light. If this was a big piece, I would keep it separated. I would do just like a little bit at a time. So I'm just adding in a little bit of dark. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to keep this out for the other side. And then I'm going to add in a little teeny bit of, I believe this is dark, dark crumb cake, just for this little bit of tree branch. Okay, now on this side, I'm just going to do the tree branch first since I have this open. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to put a little, little bit of here, just a fake fake branch. All right, same thing again. I'm going to just start with the light. So a little bit of light. This is again the granny apple green, which is a really nice spring green color. I actually took a picture <clears throat> yesterday. I just keep, I forgot to post it. I took a picture yesterday when I did the envelopes of all the Stampin' Blends because I carried them downstairs so I could uh, kind of watch a movie with the Rainbow Stamper while I was coloring and I dropped all my markers. They went all over the place, which is kind of hilarious now that I think back about it. You could, if you wanted to, add a little bit of, what do we have? I don't know what Cajun Craze is gonna look like as a roof, but let's give it a shot. So I'm gonna do a little bit of um, dark crumb cake and light Cajun Craze. I'm just gonna do the chimney. We'll see what it looks like. It could look like a disaster, but at least we tried. So I'm gonna add in just a little bit of kind of like brick marking, I guess if that makes sense. And then we can fix it when I open it up. We'll see. So I, I took my markers downstairs because I wanted to, to work on these thank you envelopes. <laughs> Spilled them everywhere. It was just like a total disaster. But I got my cards colored, so I guess that's really what matters in the end. So I'm going to just take my marker and kind of just trace the edges here. And fill in like the little gappy spaces. Don't feel like you have to do this. Sometimes I take things to the extreme. People tell me all the time. So that's kind of cute. That turned out pretty good. 
All right, so there's that. You could also, if you wanted to add a little something to the door, you could because we have that little uh, wreath. But what I'm going to do, where did I put them? Here they are. I'm going to color these in really quickly. And I'm going to go with the, um, the light Cajun craze for this. So it's kind of almost like a terracotta because I think it'll look really nice against, let's see which one of these we're going to end up using, against the uh, Coastal Cabana. I also am going to just bring out real quick my dark Cajun craze. Kind of have the shadow from this side. All right, we'll go with that. I'm just going to blend it out a little bit with the lighter one again. This is kind of one of those cards where when you're making it, you can either like really love it and you are just going totally overboard doing stuff with it, or you're, you can be really minimal and not do anything. I'm going to just for the sake of, since I have the terracotta, I'm going to do these just like they're uh, like a foliage. So not really instead of tulips, which these probably could be, but we're going to pretend like these are like little succulent. Okay, I'm going to add in a little bit of the dark. So same thing again, that's just the granny apple, which will kind of tie the trees together. So this could be cute. All right, this time I'm gonna do dark first. And then light, and then I'll see, I'll bring them up close so you guys can see, see if you can see any difference. It kind of, I think it really just depends on what you like to start. I feel like you can't make things lighter. So I usually like to start with the light and then add the dark to it. So we'll just use both of those. So. Totally cute. Good part again is this does have a die. So there is one that you can tell this one's more pointy. And then this one is for the pumpkins. It's a little bit more round. Might not be able to tell the difference, but you can in person. Let me just move this over. I forgot to close this up. There we go. All right. I have to bring out the die big shot die cutter one more time just to do these little guys and then we'll be done so you can good part about this is you just line it up just like that oh gotta find hold on sometimes you got to find your weird spot on your magnet okay you put this on hopefully the static will not take it anywhere run this one through about that camera shaking and so there's one and then we'll do one more okay oh, hold on this one's being goofy this is the the part where when you have the nice oh jesus i just moved that when you have the nice flat plates, makes this like so much better because your magnetic stuff actually sticks where it's supposed to go. If that makes sense. Let's see if I can get this on here. Smush and move. Okay, hopefully that's <laughs> still lined up slightly where I wanted it to be. All right, beautiful. Okay, move this over. Okie dokie. And now only other thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to just do this. What did I have? I used gray granite. I'm going to take smoky slate and I'm going to get, if I can find one of them, there it is. One of my blender pens, just a little bit. And I'm going to just kind of fill in a little bit of the rock, not making it super dark, but just enough that it doesn't look like white stones. The other thing you could do with this too if you decided to do more of a brownstone, is you could, um, and I'll do this with the gray, just to show you what I mean. You could kind of fill it in so like it's the path with stones, but then it also has kind of like a lighter gravel, if you can imagine. So what I'll do is, and I don't know if this is or isn't going to work, but it sounds like in my mind it might work, is I'm going to just take a sponge and I'm really, really lightly going to dip in this and kind of fill it over. So it kind of looks like the gravel of the path. So you have your stones and then there's that really, really, I don't know if you can even see it, that really light 
gray. There we go. Another thing you could do too, if you didn't want to add the different colors, uh, the different layers of color like we did with the paper, is you could sponge the end of it, sponge the edge I mean, to kind of give it a little bit of depth. And the other cool thing I did too was, actually I did this on the other one, is I used this as stones. So I stamped it. So it was kind of like, you know how some houses have like the little bits of old stone in them, mostly older. So I kind of stamped this so it looked like the pattern of it. So you could do that. There's probably something else in this stamp set. Where did I do? Where did I put it? Here. So you could do that. You could add these to like the facade of it so it almost looks bricky. But we have a lot of other stamps too that what you could do is you could put like a line pattern in it so it matched. So it kind of gave it a different look to the front of it without actually doing these layers. So that's another idea of something you could do as well if you wanted to. All right, so now we're gonna put our flower boxes on. I'm gonna put these on with some fast fuse. If not, I would definitely use something strong you could use some Tombow liquid glue if you wanted to. And I'm gonna put this right here, like that. Again, if you wanted to do three, you could put one up there as well, but I'm just gonna do two here. And again, I'm just making sure my folds, oops. Okay, so this is still pretty well folded. So now before I actually adhere this, I'm gonna just reinforce just this one, because this is really the only main score line because it's opening you could go over the other ones if you wanted to like just gently go over your whole thing but you really don't have to because the creases are really 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 good in this so now we can adhere this down this would just be the point where if you were going to decorate the front so if you were going to put something on the front here you would probably want to stamp it ahead of time unless you're going to add a panel. So what we'll do is I'm going to add a panel to it. So you could also um, add in your sentiment if you wanted to. And then you could do like home on the front and then is wherever you are. You could put that here. Put congratulations. We'll do congratulations. And then what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of front decoration just to kind of finish it off because... That way you'll have an idea of at least something to do. I'm going to stick with the light color. I'm going to just do this in gray granite just so it's not terrifically dark. Um, the other thing you could do if you wanted to, just put that right here. So you could use this as your congratulations. You could just say, you know, congratulations, love, so-and-so. Insert name here. You could also even put a panel on the back if you wanted to be able to write them like a little note. So you could write your panel and then adhere it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one more thing. So I'm going to, again, you only want to have your adhesive. Sometimes it's helpful to know where you want it. You want it here, down this edge, and then on the whole bottom. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this this way just so you can see it. I'm going to use Fast Fuse. You could certainly use uh, Tombow, but since this is going to be a card that's going to move, you definitely want to have... Something that's got some some hold to it. Could use tear and tape because that's pretty small as well. And let's see for here. I'm going to put just a little bit of liquid glue here. Just because this is pretty thin. And I want to make sure this sticks. There you go. All right, so now, again, I'm going to open this up, or I should say, I'm going to fold it, fold it how it's going to go, okay, like that. I'm going to decide where I want it to be lined up wise. The little tip of this is going to stick out. You can't really get around that unless you cut it off. I'm going to kind of eyeball where I'm laying this, press it down so I have it all the way up to the crease on this, and then I'm going to just fold this over, and without sticking together, I'm going to smush and there you have your house that opens, okay? So that looks adorable, just like that. Okay, now one other thing I'm gonna do, let me just make sure I give this a nice crease, the way it stays up. Perfect. Now one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, and please forgive me, because I'm just using up square gunky pieces that I didn't use for anything. I'm gonna add something to the other side of this, but I wanna make sure that it's trimmed first. I want this to lay um, a quarter inch smaller. So I'm going to cut this down if it's not already. That's four by five and a quarter. Let me just make sure. Actually, I'm going to do it a little bit smaller. 
I'm going to do five, three and three quarters by five. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of this stuff from the front. So I'm going to kind of do like a merge. So I'm going to do something similar to this. And then we're going to put that on the front. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is let me grab where I, you know what? I put my pool party away, so that's not going to work either. It's a little bit dark. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the fence. This would be super easy if you wanted to pull out your stamp or Addison and do this because then you could move it over. You could do the step and stamp. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this. I'm going to use, what do I have out? Soft suede. You know, it is way simpler than the roller coaster. <laughs> Lisa, that is 100% true. So I'm going to just eyeball where I want this. And because I don't have my head in this, it could be a little crooked. So <laughs> please forgive me. But you know, some fences are not exactly straight. I'm going to just, I'm trying to make this. I think I'm, <laughs> this looks like, actually, this looks like our fence, believe it or not. Because the people that put our fence in, in some spots, it goes like, whoop. <laughs> it's a good thing we're not actually really trying to, uh keep anything private so now for the last one because this already has the things on here I cleaned it off and I'm going to try to just stamp just the post part and if I miss a little bit what I'm going to do is just wipe it off so I have intended to just stamp just the post I don't want these connection lines so I'm going to just use my finger and see if I can make sure that's clean hopefully it will be and line that up I think I missed I didn't line it up oh that's pretty good considering so that's not too too bad Okay, so there's our post. Um, again, the other thing you could do, you could go back in with your, where did I put my blender pen? You go in with your blender pen, pick up a little bit of crumb cake ink if you wanted to, and you could color these in just a little bit. Doesn't have to be anything major. Kind of, if you wait a little bit between the re-inking, it'll give more of a authentic look because some of them are a little faded, you know, unless you have a, a vinyl fence. Then they're just covered with dirt and bird poop like ours. Other good thing about this is if you have a little where, where your line went over, you can add a little bit darker ink to it. Kind of cover that up so you won't be able to see the lines. So lots of ways to fix or cover up your whoopsies. And then we'll just go a little bit on the inside. Kind of looks like it's going down a hill maybe your house is on a hill we're just going to go with that i'm so excited because it's like we have about i guess it's a little bit more than a month maybe about five five weeks until the stampin up convention i'm so excited can't wait for that so i'm going to stamp in a few trees let's see where's my memento i think i put it away so in the new big catalog, you never know what is going to stay or what is going to go. So that's pretty fun to be able to see. I'm just going to add a couple trees here. I'm going to cover up this little spot where there's a blank spot. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just trying to move this along a little bit. So that's why I'm not being specifically careful. Just trying to make sure I don't mess it up with my inky fingers. Just like that. All right, so that'll be that. What else do we have? We have our little path. We can put, I'm going to pop uh, Welcome Home up on something because I am going to do that. But I'm going to just color the rest of this in real quick first. Close this up. I'm going to do this with my blends because we're going to give that a second. I'm going to uh, do what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to stamp my little greeting that I'm going to add. So I have just a little square. That might be a little bit too big. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is you could do this multiple ways. You could do this so you cut, stamped it, and then cut it out with something fancy. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. But I'm going to stamp Welcome Home, and then I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. So what we'll do is I'm going to do the welcome home. I'm going to do it in memento again. And hopefully this will make sense in a minute as to why I did it. So 
I'm just pick up my welcome. And I'm going to try and keep this tight. That way I can kind of trim close to it. Not bad. All right. And I'm going to dig something out of my bag here. Give me one sec. So, I pulled my pool party out because I wanted to be able to use that. And let's see. I think this might be pool party. Cool thing you could do, you could also, again, you could do your, um, add a little bit of glycerin to this because it'll make it blend really, really nicely. I'm just going to stamp this off for a second. Going to kind of just fill in that blue. So, there's a little bit, I'm not going real heavy on it, just a little bit of a, like a blue, blue sky hue. Back here, get a little bit more behind the fence, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go with pear pizzazz. I'm trying to find a sponge that could be clean. Okay, I'm going to just do a little bit of the green for the grass, blend that out. I'm going to do this on the bottom. I'm going to do a little hard edge of the grass with the sponging. And kind of blend to the end a little bit more. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing up here with the pool party. And I'm going to do a little more of a hard edge sponging at the top here. And I'm going to do it down the side as well. Just a little bit. I want to just blend this out. I know I'm going to fill this in eventually with the green for the trees. So I'm going to keep this on the side just in case I want to go over a little bit. So one more time, we're going to do our same color. So again, I have the granny apple green. I think this is the dark. Yeah. Dark granny apple green. Just kind of filling in a little bit of the leaves. I'm getting close to 1045 because I got to leave by 11 to go pick him up from school. But I want to at least finish this up with you guys so you can see. And what I'll do is I will go back again and make a uh, a shorter version of this. I don't know how much shorter of a version I can make because it is a little involved. But I'll try my best <laughs> to do a shorter version of this for you guys on a YouTube video, that usually makes it easier. So now I'm just gonna go in with the light. So this is with the light granny apple, just kind of fill in the rest of those leaves. Anything that I might have missed coloring altogether, I'll fill in. Once again, does not have to be perfect. I just can't believe it took me this long to make a video for this, considering it's almost been out for a whole year, which is just insane. Uh, also, Paper Pumpkin deadline to subscribe to the 6th birthday kit is coming up. So if you guys aren't Paper Pumpkin subscribers, or maybe you dropped, or you've never joined, you are getting a whole entire extra free dark crumb cake just for the branches. A whole entire extra free stamp set for their 6th birthday. And it's not going to be a, one of the little ones. It's supposed to be a bigger... I don't know exactly how big, but a bigger stamp set. So you have to sign up for that by March 10th. That's the cutoff. All right, there's that. Now I'm just going to take my pool party and just fill in a little bit of the blue. Okay, that's good enough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one more time in my pool party, and I'm going to go over my welcome home. I'm just going to kind of bounce so I'm not really swirling just in case that ink isn't dry yet. Okay, so we can do this one of two ways. We can either cut this, just trim it down square wise. So if you're going to, you know, you just bring it in a little bit from each side. You could certainly do this with your trimmer as well. You could also lay this onto a piece of pool party to have like another shadow to it. 
Or another thing you could do to it, which I kind of like doing this when you have this, the words that have a little bit of a swirl to them because I think it makes it look nicer, is a lot of times I'll trim to the phrase. So I'll kind of just, it's not exact, I'll just kind of follow along where I think the bumps are. In the script. But again, I am a person that likes fussy cutting. So if you don't like fussy cutting, you can omit this. I know it's not for everybody. And also, real quick, in case you have not heard, I think the organdy ribbon is still in stock. It was when I went when I went on this morning. So for the celebration, if you've been waiting for the organdy ribbon as one of your freebies, you better order today because I don't know how long it'll last. I'm gonna just put this on with a little fast fuse. If you decided to add this with the glycerin, you wanna make sure that you use Tombow because the glycerin makes this very slippery. So you can put this here. I'm gonna put it up top, just like that. You could pop it up if you wanted to, but again, just a little variation. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just put this on to the front, just like that. You could also, if you had some extra, uh, you could put your extra flowers on the bottom if you wanted to. You could cut out some other flowers. Boy, this is a piece I was glad to cover up because this went, ugh. I don't know what I was doing with that, but looks much nicer on this side. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just gently lay this on here so I don't smush anything. You know, my little fence is going downhill. You could always add a little bit of grass sprigs if you wanted to. Because you know the grass always grows between the fence. Just for a little bit of definition. I think I would like this sentiment a little better if it was popped up. But we're just going to put a little grass line here. Can always go back to with a little bit of dark. I think sometimes the having the two colors together gives a little nicer look. There is a great dye in the Humming Along bundle that has a beautiful um, shape to it. That would look the Welcome Home would look awesome cut out with that, which I may end up after the fact going back and re. Um, stamping this and popping it up on that because I think it would look really really pretty but um I was just afraid I was going to run out of time so there's what the outside looks like welcome home and then on the inside you could have their card you could put congratulations and like I was saying if you felt like you needed more space what you could do is take another thing this one I might actually color in but you could take a uh, whisper white panel and you could write your note on it uh you know I'll just say like so happy for you. And then you could glue this to the back. So you could have plenty more room if you wanted to be able to write something onto it. So just so you know, really cute. It's a really, really fun set. It really is. And the little additions that you can do to it, you could certainly put way more trees up here if you wanted to. You could again make this so it was just your base card with the white, but I think when you layer it onto something, it just makes it look prettier. It gives a little bit more depth. You could even take your uh, pool party and sponge the edge of this with it. Look really, really cute. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a super fun card to make. You can put curtains on the inside of the windows if you wanted to because it does have those little die cuts. So you could hang them on the inside so you could have your curtains on there. Really fun though. I mean, definitely a bundle that you might want to get because you never know. It may or may not carry over. Who really knows what does or doesn't happen. But also, if there's something you've been waiting for, especially if it comes to um, ink, and if I'll tell you this, if you're going to get the ink pad, you might as well buy the reinker so you can reink it. Anything that has these colors in it, the powder pink, berry burst, fresh fig, lemon lime twist, tranquil tide, any of the DSP, the ribbon, that does not carry over. Even if they end up, say if they decide to keep lemon lime twist, they may not carry over a lemon lime twist ribbon. They definitely are not going to carry over the DSP. It is very rare that that happens. The only one that carried over was the wood words. And I'm pretty sure that's carried over once. It probably won't carry over again. So if there's something you want, you should order it sooner than later. Because eventually, when they put out the retirement list, 
it's going to be gone. And it's either going to be on eBay or you're not going to be able to buy it. And eBay, we all know, is nobody's friend because people are crazy with their prices on eBay. But if there's something you want to get, you know, if it's this bundle, if it's a refill, if it's, you know, a, a stamp and blend color, you're better off getting it now. And also, remember, you can still sign up to become a demonstrator if you want. There's no obligation to sell or have parties or do Facebook Live videos or anything. And during celebration, so through May, uh, through March 31st, you get to pick $175 worth of stuff for $99. That's $50 more than usual. So if you have any questions, you can always send me an email. Um, you can reach me at reachthestamper@gmail.com. I do send out a newsletter if you'd like to be on it. You can send me your email address. I'd be happy to add you to it. And otherwise, there is a hostess code on the top. You do have to close the door to be able to close the card, just so you know. Because if you have the door open, the card won't close. <laughs> so if you want to close that. But it does fit in a regular envelope. The only thing that sticks out is this little teeny piece here. But that's no big deal. But adorable card. Thank you guys so much for joining me today late. I will see you back next Wednesday. Hopefully, unless something else happens, at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, if I don't see you sooner than that. And I also will get a uh, another shorter version of this posted eventually. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and take care.